Hello everyone and welcome to this presentation on the CFA Level 1 exam for June 2014. In this presentation, we look at Reading 55, Understanding Fixed Income Risk and Return. We are making this video in response to somebody's request made on YouTube. Do let us know if you would want us to make a free video for a topic of your choice. We'll be focusing on learning outcomes B, C and D of the reading. In the previous video, we already saw the Macaulay duration. In this video, we'll define, calculate, and interpret the modified and effective duration. We'll explain why effective duration is the most appropriate measure of interest rate risk for bonds with embedded options. And finally, we'll explain how different factors such as maturity and coupon rate affect a bond's interest rate risk. Let's start by looking at the modified duration. Modified duration estimates the percentage change in a bond's price for a given change in its yield to maturity. It tells us that the percentage change in a bond's price is approximately equal to minus one times the annual modified duration times the change in the annual yield to maturity we need to multiply by minus one because bond prices and their yield are inversely related. If the yield goes up, bond prices go down and vice versa. And make sure to use these terms expressed annually. Now modified duration can be calculated by dividing the Macaulay duration by one plus the yield to maturity. Again, make sure that the yield to maturity and Macaulay duration are expressed in consistent period. If Macaulay duration is expressed in six months, then the yield to maturity should also be expressed in six months. Now this formula obviously requires us to compute Macaulay duration first. Is there any way to compute modified duration directly? We can compute the approximate annual modified duration directly using this formula. P minus is the bond's price when the yield goes down. P plus is the bond's price when yield goes up. Delta R is the change in the yield to maturity expressed as a decimal and P naught is the initial bond price. Now let's look at an example. Suppose there's a 10-year bond that makes coupon payments semi-annually at 6%, its yield is 8%, and its face value or future value is $1,000. We can plug in these numbers in our financial calculator and make sure that we express these terms in six-month periods. We get the bond's price at $864.10. Now to compute the approximate annual modified duration, we change the yield, the annual yield, by five basis points. Again, we plug in the numbers in our financial calculator and make sure they're expressed in six months period. Specifically, make sure that the yield is only increased by 2.5 basis points because the annual change in the yield is five basis points. We get P plus as $861. Similarly, we can compute P minus as $867.20. And then we can use the formula to compute the approximate annual modified duration, which works out to 7.17 years. Now we can use this result to compute the approximate annual Macaulay duration by multiplying 7.17 with one plus the annual yield to maturity and this gives us the approximate annual Macaulay duration. Now this result tells us that if the yield changes by 1%, the bond's price will change by 7.17%. Now this is a linear estimate because it tells us that regardless of the direction of the interest rate change, the bond's price will change by the same amount, 7.17%. 
Now let's look at an example. The current yield is 8% and we know what the current bond price is. Suppose the yield goes down to 7%. We can compute the actual bond price which works out to this amount. And we can also predict the price given the modified duration. It turns out the actual bond price is greater than the predicted price. Similarly, if the yield goes up to 9%, we can compute the actual bond price, which again turns out to be greater than the predicted price using the modified duration. Now, it turns out that this result is because of convexity of the relationship between the price and yield for a bond. This curve is the price yield curve and this tangent is being used to compute the modified duration. Notice that the tangent is always below the price yield curve. That tells us why modified duration's prediction of the bond's price is always lower than the actual bond price. For example, if the interest rate is at R+, the predicted price is here, which is lower than the actual price of P plus. The other thing to notice is that modified duration gives us good approximate changes in the bonds price for changes in yield to maturity for smaller changes in the yield. For example, let's say the initial yield is R naught and it decreases to R minus. The predicted price according to modified duration will be here, which is lower than the actual price of P minus. And similarly, if the yield goes decreases even further, then the predicted price will be somewhere here, and the actual price will be somewhere here. Therefore, modified duration works best when the changes in the yield to maturity are small. Now let's look at the next duration measure, effective duration. This duration measure is used for bonds with embedded options such as callable and puttable bonds. These bonds do not have fixed future cash flows. Let's say there's a callable bond and the interest rates go down. The issuer of that bond has an incentive to call the bonds and then issue new bonds at the lower interest rate. Because the future cash flows of callable bonds depend on future interest rates and whether or not the bonds will be called, the future cash flows are uncertain and that's why they do not have a well-defined yield to maturity. That's also the reason why Macaulay and modified durations cannot be used for such bonds because yield to maturity is a required input for Macaulay and modified durations. The effective duration estimates the percentage change in the price of a bond given a change in a benchmark yield curve. Effective duration assumes that there is no change in the credit spread. Now what does that mean? Assume that there is no change in the benchmark yield curve, but the credit spread narrows. Let's say a bond gets a credit upgrade. It will be cheaper for the issuer to issue new bonds and they might call the existing bonds. Effective duration will not take into account this factor. It only looks at changes in the benchmark yield curve and effective duration is computed using this formula. P, mi P minus is the bond price when the yield curve is lowered. P plus is the bond price when the yield curve is raised. Delta curve is the change in the benchmark yield curve and P naught is the original bond price. Notice that this formula looks very similar to the formula we saw earlier for approximate annual modified duration. The difference is we're using curve instead of yield to maturity here. On the exam, if they want you to compute effective duration, they will provide you with all of the inputs, including P minus, P plus, the change in curve, and the bonds price. An interesting thing about effective duration 
that it does not necessarily provide you with better estimates for smaller changes in interest rates. Now why is that? Assume that the interest rate is 10% and it goes down to 9.9%. The issuer of the callable bond will not necessarily call the bonds because there are transaction costs in calling these bonds. However, if the interest rate goes down from 10% to 8%, now there's a much larger incentive for the issuer to call these bonds. This is different from modified duration, which provides best estimates for small changes in the yield to maturity of a bond. Now, effective duration can also be used for plain vanilla bonds, bonds with no embedded options. And effective duration is only equal to the modified duration if the yield curve is absolutely flat. So generally, effective duration is different from modified duration. Now let's take a look at duration properties and see how different variables affect duration. In this discussion, we will only change one variable at a time and hold the other variables constant. For example, if we add a call on a bond, we will assume that maturity, coupon rate and the yield stay the same. Let's start with maturity. Maturity is positively related to duration which means that if we, if we increase maturity, duration also increases. The reason for that is that the cash flows that are further in the future are more sensitive to interest rates and therefore they are riskier in terms of exposure to interest rate risk, which increases their duration. An exception to this general principle is certain discount bonds that have a low coupon rate, which is not zero, and it's low relative to yield, and the bond has a long time to maturity. Such bonds have a negative relation with duration. Now let's look at coupon rate. Coupon rates are actually negatively related to duration. And the reason is simple. When we get higher coupon payments earlier in the period, that decreases duration. Next up is yield. Yield is also negatively related with duration. We saw earlier that cash flows that are further in the future are more sensitive to interest rate changes. And if we increase the yield, those further future cash flows decrease substantially and therefore more weight is given to cash flows that are closer, which decreases duration. And finally, we'll look at adding a call or put. Let's start with the call first. If there's a callable bond and the interest rates go down, the callable bond will appreciate in value, but not as much as a non-callable bond. The reason is that the issuer will call the bonds and therefore the price appreciation of a callable bond is limited, which decreases how much the price can fluctuate and which decreases duration. The same logic applies to a puttable bond. If the interest rates go up, the puttable bond's price will go down, but the investors can put those ba bonds back to the issuer and that also reduces how much the bond's price can tumble compared to a non-puttable bond, which decreases its price fluctuation, which decreases duration. Now this brings us to an end to this presentation. We hope that you found it useful. Please let us know if you would want us to make videos on a specific topic. Thanks very much for watching and we wish you the best of luck on the exam. Thank you.